so where do i invest do i buy a 50 by 100 broti and keep 100 cows do i build some rentals do i get into a circle do i join an mmf do i buy safaricom shares and wait for them to double where do i keep my money this is angie on a bonds a channel that educates on treasury bonds investment and i also touch a bit on other investment so where do we invest so the context here when you talk of investment is where you put your money so it can make money for you so thing is you need to understand what these investments are you see growing up and in our culture we tend to invest based on how we were brought up what we saw our parents doing what our friends are investing in so we follow one another in terms of who make a pesa yako up in niweke right now there's a trend going on on mmf and everyone is joining in and i'm not saying it's bad but that is how we tend to invest you know we all get into property we all have a buroti somewhere everyone that is a plot somewhere a piece of land rental we are all into that so we don't really get to understand other investments but we just jump in the main thing about investments you really have to understand what each investment does for example let me talk about the variety that we have in the market i'll start with the main one the one that we love real estate buying land thing is there are two aspects of real estate there's an aspect of buying land and waiting for it to appreciate and that's like trading you're buying an asset at a low price you're waiting for it to have a higher value and sell it off and that's trading there's also the passive income bit of it where you build or you develop that piece of land into rentals and you wait for a passive income every month so are you getting into the trading bit of the real estate or the passive income bit of it we have circles which are very common and especially with the big institutions if your employees and they give us a chance to save somewhere to invest somewhere collectively so when it comes to circles this is whereby you put in savings and they earn interest and there's also the shareholding aspect of it where you're a shareholder of that circle and you gain dividends are you aware of the two aspects and do you know what exact return you're getting from the circle please remember that one of the main advantage of the circle is that you're able to borrow against your savings but are you someone who is looking to borrow are you or are you just joining a circle because well you don't have an alternative of investment when we look at fixed deposit that is where you place some money with your bank and you agree not to withdraw up to a certain limit and to earn a specific interest that's an interest between you and your bank otherwise your money could stay in the bank without earning much because you have not assigned it to be fixed in a fixed deposit where it's earning a certain interest so what are the terms and conditions of that fixed interest it's also an investment and what is the return from it the MMFs, the current trend whereby everyone is looking for an MMF. Remember, these fund managers have other funds, not just money market fund. You could decide to pick a bond fund. You could decide to pick um, an equities fund that compromises of investment in shares. Do get to understand what these MMFs are, what the other funds entail, and what the terms and conditions are. You could decide to pick shares, you could buy shares from different companies, but there are two aspects on the shares as well. There's a trading aspect where you buy shares when the prices are low and sell when the prices go up and you keep doing that and there are people who specialize in that. There's also the passive investment a bit of shares where you buy shares and hold for a very long duration and wait to gain dividends. So when you're buying shares, what exactly do you want to achieve with those shares? the forex the business of trading in foreign currency i know i know uh we got in bought dollars when they were at what 150 160 and then what happened they came down and i'm not saying there are people who don't make money i mean some people even bought it at what 130 
it's a trade is it a trade that you understand do you know when to go in when to get out do you know the risk that is entailed in when it comes to trading in forex do you know that there are other currencies that you can make a lot of money through not just dollars do you understand the investments that you're getting yourself into so here are some factors that you need to consider when deciding on which investment to jump in the main one financial goals what are your financial goals are you chasing a high return are you chasing financial freedom are you chasing cash flow are you chasing security what exactly is your financial goal and is it well and clearly defined for example, if you're chasing high returns, then bonds is not the thing for you. Remember, bonds generally have low return and low risk. You might consider other investments. The only reason the bonds are this high, giving uh, returns of 18.46%, it's because market has been going up, but it definitely will come down. So normally, you might get returns of 10-11% from the bonds and bills market. And if you're looking for a monthly passive income, then bonds might be the thing for you when you ladder them and have a coupon coming in every month, as opposed to something like shares, which will depend on how the market is behaving. And remember, if you're looking for the dividends from the shares, again, they pay once per year. So you might need to reconsider what your goals are. If your goal is retirement benefit, maybe you need your benefits when you're retired, uko 60, 70, which is many years to come. Okay, depending on how old you are, because right now, from where I'm seated, 60 is not too far. Uh, then maybe real estate will be ideal where you invest in land and wait for 10, 20 years for it to appreciate. If you're looking for compounding your investment where you, you want your investment to keep growing, so you keep plowing back your profits, your returns, then bonds might not be it, real estate might not be it, MMF could be very ideal for that. Are you looking to cover education for your kids? You know when you actually need the fees, when you pay, then you might need treasury bills because they're short-term investments and pay out in different, at different specific times of the year, depending on when you invest. Remember, T-bills are three, either three months, six months, or one year. If it's an emergency fund that you're trying to create with your investment, then something like real estate might not be it. Something like bonds might not be it. T-bills could be more like it or MMFs could be more ideal for your emergency fund or even better fixed deposit because they have better terms of breaking the fixed deposit and getting your money back. The other thing that you need to consider your age. The younger you are, the more time you have and the more risk you can take. You can afford to play around with shares. You can afford to play around with investments that have higher risk. But the older it gets, you want to secure your cash flow. Remember when you start hitting 50s, eh? uh, the frequency of going uh, to the hospitals, I don't know, you have this issue or that issue, and you need you to have your cash flow in check. So you might consider an investment based on that age, based on the, the age group that you are at. Also consider your income levels or your income streams. Some of these investments, like the bonds and bills, the minimum is 50,000. What if what you have is 1,000, 2,000? There are other investments that you can easily get into that. Real estate as well. By the time you're purchasing a piece of land, what minimum will that be? It might not be ideal depending on your income. Again, you could be someone who's making the money in millions and something like MMA might not serve you you might even want to consider a different fund as opposed to the money market fund or a bond or real estate so your income stream your income levels play a very important role in formation how well do you understand the investment again as i said we have this habit of investing because our friends are investing because our parents told us to invest in this i mean that is the thing they knew as investment 
What information do you have about investment? Do you understand what you're getting yourself into? When you want to buy a bond, do you know exactly what it is, how it pays, what the risks are? I think it's very important to understand an investment before getting yourself into it. Otherwise, two, three years down the line, you'll start wondering, okay, what is this I got myself into? Some of them you'll try getting out of them and it might be hard and it can feel very frustrating. And I could give examples of insurance policies, education insurance policies, which are good vehicles for investment, but you need to understand what they are. They serve a certain purpose, but when you go into them thinking they're investments and waiting for a return and trying to get out and feeling like you're stuck for very many years, then it can be very frustrating. And the main reason is because you don't get to understand what it was about in the first place before you signed. The terms and conditions that we usually don't read. The risk aspect, are you a risk taker, you a lazy investor and not lazy in a bad way because I know treasury bonds investors, we are termed as lazy investors, but not necessarily. You see, you could be involved in another, let's say you have business, which is a high risk thing that you're doing or you're in employment or you just want to have a balanced way of investment. So you have other things which are high risk and you want to balance it out with something that is more of what you'd call a lazy investment, a bond where you just put in, throw in the money or even an MMF, you throw in the money and wait for whoever is managing that account to give you a certain, re, uh, a certain return. But if you're a risk taker, you could try your luck on the Forex. I mean, there are huge benefits to be reaped from something like the Forex. The business of trading real estate, buying a kashamba here and selling within no time. You know, that's the whole marketing thing when it comes to land. We are told buy this land 1 million in two years, you'll have it, you'll sell it at 10 million. I mean, there are people who are good at that and they understand that and they're risk takers. Is that your thing? Debt aspect. Are you in debt? Do you have loans? Because you could be investing in something that's giving you 16% return and yet you have a loan where you're paying 25% maybe not even just one alone eh? you need to weigh and see how is your debt what are your debt levels before you get into an investment you might want to clear the debt first as opposed to getting into an investment that will be eaten up by your debt the family setup are you at your early stages where you just have a young family of just husband and wife have you started the journey of family where now you have a kid or two kids are your kids in their teens level are they living the nest i mean at what point of the family unit are you at because that will really uh, help you or guide you in deciding on what investment you're getting into because you could be setting up something a fund for the school fees you know these are the things you really need to consider when it comes to investment money relationships what do you tell yourself about money what have you grown up knowing in terms of money when i talk about bonds will you sit and say aasi wezi pea ruto pesa when you think of shares do you sit and say brokers si wezi wapelekea pesa when you think of real estate broti maguta maguta what comes to your mind? What is it that you believe about this investment? Because the thing is, just like a business, any investment needs to sit very well with you. You need to be comfortable with it. Remember, one investment can work very well with someone and not work well with someone else because of the beliefs that you hold. So any investment has to flow. You have to feel it. You have to love it. You have to want it. So what are those investment relationships that you have? So when it comes to deciding which investment to pick, all these factors and others are things you need to sit down and ask yourself what suits you. Remember, what works for one person might not work for you. Just go through the list and see what you need to pick based on your goals. And if you need help coming up with which investment to take, 
uh, reach me on the email indicated and the number. I do hold a financial advisory one-on-one -on -one consultation packages where I can guide you through. I do hold a group training sessions if you need that and I can guide you through it. And always remember in whatever you do, your money cannot afford to be idle. Remember, if your money is not making you money, then your money is losing you some money. Thank you. Thank you.